Hi, I'm Miss Gloria. Thank you for joining me for Animal Masks, Music, and More. I am a parent educator with a wonderful program called Parents as Teachers, and I'm also a musician. So in this video, I am talking to both you as an adult and to the children. So hello, and it's my hope that you will have fun together. We're going to be doing all kinds of fun things. We'll be singing, we're going to make a mask, we're going to make face masks, and we're going to make a percussion instrument and play some games. So we're going to do a lot of fun things. We're going to be reflecting a little bit, and all of this is going to be fun, and it's all going to be play because play is learning. So a few months ago, I made this video called Animal Masks, um, and it's a song video. And I made it because all of a sudden, because of the pandemic, everyone was walking around with masks on. And that's pretty strange for children, I think. So I thought that this music video might make masks just a little bit less strange. So let's go ahead and watch the animal mask music video and then we will do some crafting and some talking and some play some games too. So see you in a bit. <music> So good to see you today. I'm Miss Gloria, and I bet that you have been seeing some people walking around with masks on. And that is really a good thing because it's keeping us all safe and healthy. But I thought I would sing you a song about masks and especially about animal masks. So this song has animals in it and counting in it. So see if you can find where the counting is. And it's also about feelings and about rhyming. So here is the Animal Mask song. I've got a mask like a cat. It makes me look a little bit like a cat. And cat rhymes with bat and hat and flat. I've got a mask like a cat. And a cat goes, meow. I've got a mask like a dog. It makes me look a little bit like a dog. And dog rhymes with frog and log and bog. I've got a mask like a dog. And a dog goes, ruff, ruff. And a cat goes, meow. I've got a mask like a duck. It makes me look a little bit like a duck. And duck rhymes with truck and buck and luck. I've got a mask like a duck. And a duck goes quack, quack, quack. And a dog goes ruff, ruff. And a cat goes meow. I've got a mask like a cow. It makes me look a little bit like a cow. With brow and now and wow, I've got a mask like a cow. And a cow goes woo, 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 woo. And a duck goes quack, quack, quack. And a dog goes ruff, ruff. And a cat goes meow. I've got a mask like a mouse. It makes me look a little bit like a mouse. And mouse rhymes with house and blouse and spouse. I've got a mask like a mouse, and a mouse goes squeak, 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 and a cow goes moo, 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 and a duck goes quack, 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 and a dog goes ruff, ruff, and a cat goes meow. I've got no mask at all, there's no one just like me at all. Rhymes with B and tree and C. I've got no mask at all. And when I'm happy, I smile. And when I'm sad, I cry. And when I'm angry, I speak. And when I'm tired, I sleep. Thank you for watching the Animal Mask music video. 
So we're going to watch it again a little bit later after we do some fun activities. But before we do all of that fun activity stuff, I have a question for you. How do you think music is good for us? So did you come up with any ideas? Well, research shows that when we listen to music or especially if we sing a song or if we play a musical instrument, our brain is making many connections all over the place. So music is really good for the pathways of, in the brain and it's also really good for learning and it's also a lot of fun. So in what ways can you think of that music is really good for learning? So music is really good for language. A lot of songs have words so that children are learning vocabulary and speech sounds and rhyming, which is a big step toward reading. Music also develops the parts of our brain that learn math. And music develops our motor skills, like moving around to the hokey pokey or dancing, or doing little finger plays like the itsy bitsy spider. They strengthen specific areas of our brains that have to do with coordination and fine motor dexterity. And also it's really fun to dance. Last but not least, music is something that you can do together with pretty much nothing. You can just get out and just start singing. You can like while you're waiting at a traffic light or while you're doing your chores around the house, um, you can just start singing. So it's very good for, the, for your attachment. So not only is it good for our brains, it's just good for our relationship with each other. Music is really big stuff. So let's have some fun. Let's make a musical instrument. So here are a few different things. This is just a shaker with rice in it and the rice is colored. So I'm gonna show you about how to do that. And you can also just have some nice bells on some yarn, but you wanna make sure that they're on there really securely because they're choking hazards. So this yarn is really thick. So I have made this yarn, put lots of different yarns together to make it really thick, but it makes a really nice jingly kind of sound. And you can also just have a plastic box or a Tupperware container and a spoon to drum on or a box. I'm sure this has already happened in your house or school. Or you can have even put two spoons together and have them make noise. That's a nice percussion instrument. Or this, these are two paper plates. So you could put some rice inside. Well, first you would color the outsides of the plates to decorate them and then put some rice inside. So these are just ideas. We're gonna actually take some time and make some and then staple these together all the way around so the rice doesn't come out and then tape where the staples were so we don't have any owies from the staples. So this is not one that you need to make right now but these are just some ideas. It makes a nice kind of a drum and a tambourine. So actually, that's kind of fun. <laughs> that's a fun one. But let's just go ahead and talk about the colored rice and do a shaker bottle. Because that's a lot of fun for children to make. So we're going to take a little bit of rice and pour it in here. So you would probably, if you wanted to do four or five colors. This is just regular food coloring. So you could just put some, a lot of probably a little bit more in there and 
pour some food coloring on it, and then mix it up. This is great for your child to do. So we probably won't be able to do this for our shaker bottle this time because this is gonna have to go into the oven after it has turned into this nice solid color. So then you put it in on a cookie sheet, all your different piles of different colored rice on a cookie sheet, and you can heat it in the oven for, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes um, until it's dry anyway. So you want to try it at a very, very low temperature, like uh, 200s or just even warm. So you just basically want to just dry it out so that when you mix all the different colors together, it doesn't turn brown. And of course, it's really fun for children to see what happens when you mix other colors together. So we have a little blue and with the red, what color does that make? And then they can explore color mixing. Get a little bit of a purpley color. So that's how you mix, mix the rice. But for this, we're just going to take an empty shaker bottle, open the lid, and this is fun. Have a funnel if you have one on hand, or you can roll some paper up to make a little funnel. That also works. And then your child can take the rice and pour it inside the funnel. It comes out. Or you can use like little seeds, then it's in there. Close up the lid. You might want to tape it really good or if you have a hot glue gun later on, you can glue that on so they don't just open it up. So there you go. That makes a nice, nice shaker noise. So if you would like to just stop the tape and just make your own percussion instrument or go and run and grab a box and a spoon or a Tupperware container, or maybe you would like to try to decorate some paper plates on the outside with a nice design on both sides. Staple it, tape it, you can do that. Make some bells. Okay, so have fun and come back in a minute when you're done and then we'll do some more fun things. So that was fun. So keep your instruments close by because we're gonna use them later when we actually sing the animal mask song together. So one thing in the animal mask song, obviously since it's called animal masks, is that it has a lot of animals in it. So why is it important for learning to have animals in songs. A lot of songs have animals in them. So, hmm, I wonder why are animals good for thinking and learning? Animal sounds encourage language development. Sometimes we can make animal sounds even before learning words. So, try it. Moo. Oink. Animal sounds have a variety of sounds and inflections like quack, quack, quack. And animal sounds make learning new sounds really easy and fun. So let's do another activity. So since this is called animal masks, let's make an animal mask. So go ahead and grab some paper and some markers. If you have um, some scissors, that'd be great. And maybe a little bit of tape and some yarn. So. I'm going to get all that stuff too, and then we can make animal masks. Okay, so we're going to make a little mask, and hopefully you've got some paper. It doesn't have to be fancy. Any, any old scratch paper is fine. 
markers, maybe a pencil or some crayons, tape, paper punch, scissors, yarn. So if you don't have all that stuff, feel free to stop the video and come back when you get it. So we are going to start by folding this paper. So if you have an older child, they can try to do corner to corner, lengthways like that. Um, if it's not perfect, that's okay. It doesn't really matter at all. And if they can get it pretty close, that's great too. So, and if you have a younger child, then you can just do this part or, so we're gonna fold it somewhat in half and then take our scissors and cut down somewhat along the line in the middle. So if you have a younger child, they might just kind of go all over like that and that's okay. Of course you want scissors that aren't pointy like this. These are good kid scissors, but they're maybe a little too pointy for some youngsters. And then just cut and if they can cut down the line, that's wonderful. So now we have two pieces, one for you and one for a child. So the next thing that we can do is fold this in half again. So corner to corner, close enough. And then take a pencil and you could draw some lines that kind of make this sort of almost a triangle, but a little bit wider down here. And then these are really great lines for a child to follow. I'm just going to cut that. I'm going to try to go a little fast so you can always stop this video if you want to because I'm, I'm slow. <laughs> so then if you open this up, it's a really nice shape. So now what we're going to do is get some crayons or markers and just make maybe an animal face on there. So you can say, what does an animal have? Like, let's say you're gonna make, you could make a cat or a dog or a cow or a duck or any animal you would like. And like, what does a cat have? So you might say, well, a cat has eyes. So we can use crayons, markers, whatever. So if I were going to make cat eyes, and this is what where the head is, so maybe the cat's eyes might be over here, so they could be dots, or they could be circles, or they could just be scribbly. Depends on how old your child is. And like, let's say we want to make a nose. So what does, where does a nose usually go? It usually goes somewhere in here. It could be that, triangle, or scribbles. <laughs> also, we could have a mouth. So a mouth could be a big smiley face. Or it could be this funny little thing cats have. Or maybe what else does a cat and dog have? They have what comes out here like that. Little whiskers. But whatever, whatever you all want to do on here is just fine. It doesn't matter. It's just fun. So um, if you want to continue on your own, you can um, stop the video or we can move on. So the next step is just making a little snip right here and then turn it around and make a little snip right here. And then we're gonna fold that in and tape it so that it has a little bit of dimension to it. So let's do that. And go a little bit fast. So then we just put this on here. And then put this on here, the other side. That makes it fit the face a little bit better. Like that. So then the next thing is, let's 
we're almost done we are going to put a little tape over here on these edges here because that's where the hole is going to be and if we put tape on here it will reinforce it a little bit and then we can punch a hole easier to punch a hole with the hole punch you may be able to do it with a pencil we can try that tape on this side we could even just do that really fold it over Let's see if a whole pencil works pencil doesn't really work very well scissors you could use a little bit of scissor action on there though if you wanted to that kind of works so let's put the yarn in there so then we're going to get some yarn oh, about that long times two cut this and then we're going to do that again some yarn times two cut that okay and then we can put this in the hole here that's the hole we made with the scissors i have to reinforce that a little bit with some more tape yeah that works that works very well and then we're going to tie this in a knot this is something an adult might have to do. A grown-up might have to do this part. Okay, and we're gonna just do that same thing on the other side. Stick it in the hole. It's easier for the child to stick it in the hole if there is a paper punch hole, that's for sure. And that is really good practice for fine motor skills. So then I'm gonna tie this in a knot there you have it there's a mask so that would fit very well on the little face so keep these masks close by because we're going to use them when we sing the animal mask song again so actually singing the same song over and over is really good for our brains and reading the same book over and over is really good and playing with the same toy over and over is really good for our brains because it makes the connections and the pathways stronger and stronger. So you may remember that in the animal mask song there isn't really specific counting like there isn't really one two three four but there's some hidden counting so see if you can find the hidden counting in the animal mask song the next time that we listen to it like for instance the cow goes moo 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 and then you can count the number of times that the cow goes moo moo so being able to count just like one two three four five is great and it's really good for memory but being able to count like objects or sounds one two three four that really helps children understand that three is more than one and two is less than five. Are you ready for another activity? So let's talk about rhyming. So rhyming is like cat and hat and bat and flat. So why is rhyming good for our brains? Rhyming is fun. It has rhythm and it has interesting sounds. Rhyming helps children learn how to read because it's all about word families like cat and hat and flat and sat and like dog and frog and bog and log. So let's have a rhyming scavenger hunt. So even if you have a toddler or a baby, you can still take them around the room and show them all the different 
objects and they'll love hearing the sounds of the words and they'll love hearing your voice. So um, we're going to go around and see if we can find some things. How about some a word that's not on the Animal Mask Song video? So how about a word like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? No, I'm only joking. So how about finding something that rhymes with far? So like far, bar, gar. See if you can go around the room and find objects that rhyme with the word far. And you can stop this tape, this video, if you want to, um, and go on a rhyming scavenger hunt. See you in a minute. So what did you find? Hmm, I can't wait to hear about it. Did you find maybe a jar? Or maybe you found a star. What about a car? Okay, let's try it again. Let's try it with a different word. So let's try it with something that sounds like the word new. So new, do, through. Those are some words that sound like that rhyme with the word new. So if you see if you can go around your room and find something that rhymes with new. And it's okay to stop this video to go on this rhyming scavenger hunt. So did you find something that rhymes with new? Did you find something blue? Or how about a screw? Or maybe you found a shoe. And there's also moo. And there's bamboo and canoe and kangaroo. Rhyming is fun. So we're going to do one more activity before we sing the animal mask song again with the video. And we're going to talk about feelings because there are a lot of feelings in the animal mask song. So happy is a feeling. Happy and sad is a feeling when you cry. So those are the two really big feelings. But what are some other feelings? There's frustrated. Frustrated is when you are trying to do something and it's really, really hard and you get frustrated. And there's angry. Sometimes we get angry when someone maybe decided to grab a toy that we liked. Then there's also sleepy when we get really tired because it's time for nap time. Or sometimes we get <gasps> surprised like when someone goes boo. And sometimes we get anxious, like really worried. So we're going to get our markers out and our paper plates and make some feeling faces. But before we do that, let's talk about why feelings are so important. Like why is it so important to know words for how we feel? So when we were young and babies, we could not say words. So the only way that we could tell anyone how we were feeling was by crying. But as we grow and we get older and older, then we can start to use words to show how we feel. And that's just a great thing to be able to tell someone how you feel. So teaching children words like happy, sad, frustrated, angry, um, that tells them how to express themselves without crying. It also lets them understand that you care.
So we are going to be making some feeling faces on paper plates. So it's also going to be handy to have a mirror so that they can see their face and um, figure out what the different expressions actually look like. So we can make some different faces and that's what we're going to do next. We'll make some paper plate feeling faces. This is our activity for making paper plate faces. So we just need paper plates and some different colored markers. It's handy to have a mirror. It's also handy to have a book of faces. These are two really good books that have emotions in them. So you could actually read a book or look at pictures that have different emotions in them. Like here's a great one for happy. So they can see what that looks like. Oh look, there's a baby who's crying. So sad. Are you sad sometimes? I know I get sad sometimes. This book actually has a matching element to it also. So let's go ahead and read this book actually. Making Faces, a first book of emotions. What's that? Silly baby face. <gasps> Look at the happy baby. Can you make a happy face? Let's see you make a happy face. You can look in the mirror, see if you can make a happy face. Miss Gloria's happy face. Find the happy baby. Which one's happy? There it is. Okay. Oh, look at this sad baby. Can you make a sad face? My baby is very sad. I want to get the mirror. See if you can see yourself making a sad face. There's a sad baby. All different faces. That's the sad one. <gasps> Look at the angry baby. Can you make an angry face? Oh, there's a mirror. Find the angry baby. There's that one. If you would like to read this book yourself, you can turn the sound down so that you can do this instead of me. And turn the page. Look at the surprised baby. Can you make a surprised face? Let's look in the mirror. Which one is a surprised face? Oh, they're surprised. Can you find it? There it is. Yay! Oh my gosh, look at the silly baby. Can you make a silly face? See if you can look in the mirror, find a silly face. Where's the silly face over here? There's the silly face. There they are. Happy baby, sad baby, angry baby, surprise baby, silly baby. And there's a mirror. <laughs> the end. Okay, so now we have our paper plates. You can look in the mirror if you want to. Let's see, what does a face have? A face has eyes and nose and mouth and ears. So first we can 
try to make a circle if we want to because the face has a is basically kind of a circle or an oval shape then we can where do you think the eyes go wonder where the eyes go what do eyes look like they could be circles or they could be go this way or they could be dots. Maybe they have eyebrows. There's a nose. But you can make all kinds of noses. It could be a circle nose. Or it could be a dot. And then we have a mouth. That's a happy face. If I were going to make a sad face, what would the mouth look like? There's the eyes, here's the nose. If it were a sad face, maybe the face mouth would go like that. Sad, oh sad, and maybe they have some tears. You can try making an angry face if you want to. An angry face. I'm going to use purple for angry. An angry face. Eyes. Nose. And a mouth. And eyebrows sometimes go like that when you're angry. So if you would like to stop this tape and make some different feelings faces on plates, that would be fine. Be right back. So that was fun. So in our time together, we talked about masks. We sang the animal mask song. We learned different things. We reflected. We learned about animals and sounds and language. We also learned about counting and listening. And we learned about rhyming and reading and we also learned about feelings. So we did a lot of learning by having a lot of fun. We're gonna sing the Animal Mask song one more time with the music video. So go get your percussion instruments and your masks and anything else you would like to get. And I'll be right back after the song with more. I've got a mask like a cat It makes me look a little bit like a cat And cat rhymes with bat and hat and flat I've got a mask like a cat And a cat goes meow I've got a mask like a dog It makes me look a little bit like a dog And dog rhymes with frog and log and bog I've got a mask like a dog And a dog goes Ruff, ruff And a cat goes Meow I've got a mask like a duck It makes me look a little bit like a duck And duck rhymes with truck And buck and luck I've got a mask like a duck And a duck goes Quack, quack, quack And a dog goes Ruff the cat goes meow. I've got a mask like a cow. It makes me look a little bit like a cow. And cow rhymes with brow and now and wow. I've got a mask like a cow. And a cow goes moo 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 moo. And a duck goes quack quack quack. And a dog goes ruff ruff. And the cat goes. mask like a mouse. It makes me look a little bit like a mouse. And mouse rhymes with house and blouse and spouse. I've got a mask like a mouse. And a mouse goes squeak, 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 squeak. And a cow goes moo, 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 moo. And a duck goes quack, quack, quack. And a dog goes ruff, ruff. No mask at all, 
There's no one just like me at all. And me rhymes with B and tree and C. I've got no mask at all. And when I'm happy, I smile. And when I'm sad, I cry. And when I'm angry, I speak. And when I'm tired, I sleep. Thank you for listening today. If you would like to watch the Animal Mask music video again without this long video, there is a link um, that you can click on below. So, well, it was really fun to be with you. I hope that you had fun and I hope that you are well. I know these are strange times right now, but with strength and resilience, we can get through. And if you need any support, just reach out. So be well. Till next time. Bye-bye.